What's up, people? My name is Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie. Uh, welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'm currently ranking and reviewing every single Frank Zappa album released after he passed away in December of 1993. And out of the 55 uh, released post-93, I've done the 55 released pre-93, um, elsewhere on this channel, I'm currently on number eight, Hammersmith Odeon. This was, is a 3D, 3 CD release, released back in 2010, um, and it is essentially uh, a live show, sequenced to feel like an actual live show from the winter 1978 tour, um, but they, all the songs come from uh, performances at the Hammersmith Odeon venue just right outside of London. Uh, there were four shows to open the tour, um, three of those have tracks on here. The first one does not. And then there was one final show at the end of the tour. Um, and there are tracks on here on that. So we have a bunch of tracks from essentially four different shows, though there was a fifth, um, sequenced to feel like an actual show. So like the first roughly hour plus is the exact same set list that was played every single night on this tour. Um, and then after that first hour of songs, hour plus of songs, that's when Frank started to deviate and mix things up. Um, and then you get a really good sampling of those songs that he used in the second half of those shows. You don't get all of them. Um, so when I get to the nitpicking, I do have a couple nitpicks. Um, but for the most part, you get an entire show, a little bit longer than what an entire show would feel like. I think this entire thing is just short of three hours long. Um, it is amazing. Um, and I have to apologize because I feel like number eight is a little too far away from number one for this release. I think this is one of the releases I was the most excited about when it came out um, because I'm in my mind working on doing a series of videos when I'm done with the album videos in which I rank and review every single Frank Zappa tour. Um, because when you start really getting into Frank Zappa, at least in my mind and people I know, you start to think of Frank in terms of like who was in the band at that time, what did they play on that tour, um, and yes, you have albums, but the albums seem to be more signifiers of what the tour was like rather than the tour like reflecting the album, if that makes any sense. Like I don't think in terms of albums, I think in terms of tours. Um, this... Interestingly enough, this band, the Fall 77, Winter 78 band, this is the Shake Your Booty band. This is the Baby Snakes band. This is obviously the Halloween 77 band. I have yet to review Halloween 77. It is somewhere on this list. So that is why I want to apologize to this band because Halloween 77, which is six complete shows, two from 1028 77, two from 1029, one from 1030, the Halloween show. Six complete shows. Um, that's still on this list. And I felt like this band is incredibly well represented. And yes, this is a slightly different feeling, the winter 78 and the fall 77. Um, these, this recording is a lot like crazy and hectic and the energy is not as manic as those Halloween shows are. Um, but at the same time, I thought like, I can't give this two of the top 10, two of the top five spots even. Um, and I was having a really hard time kind of figuring out which was six, which was seven, which was eight. So I, I stuck this here as sort of a split the votes penalty. You're gonna, it's still coming. We got more of this band coming up on this list. But for right now, I'm just gonna put it at eight, even though I think this is one of my favorite album releases. Um, talking about the tour ranking, um, if you've watched this video, this channel at all, you know what my number one band is going to be, Fall 74. This is number two. I'm, I'm giving that away right now. This band, this and Fall 74 for me are just a notch, a step ahead of every other band that Frank had. Um, just something about the sound, the songs, um, the construction of the set lists are amazing. Like, I think Frank, this is just almost a distillation of everything excellent about Frank in one tour. Um, and when I go through the set list later on this, um, the set list on this kind of replicate the set list of the live tours, the live shows. And I think they're the most perfectly constructed set lists Frank has ever had on any tour. Like, I don't think there's any moment in these shows where you have back-to-back -back songs that don't have a solo or something interesting in them or like an instrumental, like you don't just get, oh, this is a song with lyrics, this is a song with lyrics, this is a song with lyrics. No, every song in the sequence 
brings something different, whether it be a different vocalist, a different soloist, an instrumental, a comedy piece. I mean, it's just so perfectly well-balanced. Um, and this captures that, as does the Halloween 77 things. So who is in this band, you're wondering, and why is it so good? Well, you get Frank on guitar and vocals. Um, Terry Bozio is still on drums. He's been there since 75. Uh, Patrick O'Hearn is still on bass. He's been there since fall 76. Um, and this combo, the O'Hearn Bozio combo, I think it's Frank's most rock combo. It's like the most straightforward one he has. Um, Dunbar was kind of jazzy manic. Uh, you got the 73, 74 era, which was a lot funkier. Um, after this, the Vinny, um, Vinny and Barrow are just like crazy pedal to the metal the entire time. Wackerman or Tunis are their own little thing. Wackerman's kind of a mini Vinny, I kind of think. He's very manic, but not as, doesn't dominate as much in the sound. Um, but I think Bozio and O'Hearn are the most rock in that they give Frank a lot of space to operate when he solos, but then they come in hard. Like in any Frank solo for this tour, they're, they are very good about building tension for X number of like, bars and then releasing it and then building tension and releasing it and building tension and releasing it and their entire support of him rhythmically is like this churning forward where they just keep pushing Frank and like tightening the tension but every time they release it it still stays slightly tighter than it was before so by the end of the solo you're just ready to like erupt it's the most in some ways typical standard conventional solo support but at the same time, mind-blowing and phenomenal. And Bozio's fills and the things Patrick O'Hearn does, the sound of Patrick O'Hearn's bass, especially in like the jams of like Pound for Brown, a little house I used to live in, just amazing. So probably my favorite rhythm section um, if I was forced to pick. Luckily, I am not. Um, then you get the addition of Peter Wolf and Tommy Mars. Or not, yeah, Peter Wolf and Tommy Mars on keyboards. Uh, Wolf has more of a Moog, bassy sound a lot of the times, more of a straightforward piano type thing. Um, Mars is a lot more kind of synthy and ba 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 crazy. Does a lot of scat singing in his. Um, then you get the addition of Ed Mann on percussion. We know how valuable Ed Mann is. He would be there all the way through '88. And then his only two tours: uh, Fall '77, Winter '78. A man who I think does not get enough credit, or maybe he does for completely influencing this band's sound. The small little details, the noises in the back, his vocals are incredible. <clears throat> he brings a lot to this, and that is Adrian Ballou, who would go on and be on David Bowie's live band and the Talking Heads, and then of course King Crimson. And he brings a lot of like that King Crimson elephant talk type sound. He gets a really nice solo in Flakes. Um, he gets some Screech in Time and Muffin Man. Um, in Torture Never Stops, he has that whole layer of just weird noises that are in the background. Like, I, I don't think you can over, over appreciate, I don't know, I think Baloo is just so incredibly valuable <clears throat> and helps really define the sound of this band. Um, so that's who the band is. Absolutely amazing. Um, again, this is three CDs. Um, I don't know what else to say other than this is just absolutely phenomenal. The solos here are incredible. Um, Rat Tamago and the You Can't Do That on Stage Volume 1 Torture Never Stops are both from this tour. Uh, all the backing tracks from Shake Your Booty are from the Fall 77 version of this tour. Um, almost every song on Shake Your Booty is represented on here because this is the Shake Your Booty band and they almost did that album in its entirety almost every night. I'm So Cute uh, was the only song that was kind of not part of that regular rotation, um, interestingly enough. Um, but before I get on to what is on here and why these things are so great, nitpicks. Um, two songs that were played on every single show uh, on the Winter 78 are not on here. Uh, Wild Love, um, but Wild Love is represented incredibly well on Halloween 77. There's like 20, 30 minute versions of Wild Love on there. Um, so I, I think that took care of that, even though that would follow this. Um, Yo Mama is not on here. Um, this was Yo Mama's first tour um, during the Fall 77 tour. It was essentially, the Yo Mama was essentially just a solo that kind of slowly built in the same way. Um, 
and it was part of the end of Wild Love, so you get to hear that on Halloween 77. Um, you get a good version of that on Chicago 78, which I have yet to review. Um, but the interesting thing about Yo Mama, and I think it would have been nice to have it here, was the early versions of Yo Mama, the sort of build up in the, the three step sort of solo, that build up was different and there were different parts. There was even a part, I don't think it was at the Hammersmith Odeon, it was maybe a couple of shows after that, where it kind of sounds like a you are what you is type backing thing, -na 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 -na. you know, a little more upbeat and crazy than we're used to. Um, so it would be nice to have a Yo Mama from this tour, which is why if they decide to release another complete show from Winter 78, I 100% support that. Um, the other thing that would have been nice to hear is a Shake Your Booty Tango. Um, uh, at the end of Little House I Used to Live In, it used to be, as it is on here, Little House I Used to Live In, uh, some keyboard and piano solos by Wolf and Mars, and then it would go into the dun dun dun, dun the Shake Your Booty Tango riff and Frank would, would guitar solo. Um, that was added as the tour went on and became part of it. Um, this one does not have that on it. Um, again, we're limited by the fact that we're just taking Hammersmith Odeon performances. Um, but again, another reason why it would be nice to have another complete show from this band is to get a, a Shake Your Booty Tango in there. Um, so anyways, that's about it. So this is what this disc contains. Disc one is, uh, you know, the first portion of the show that was always the same every night. You open up with the Purple Lagoon. The band just plays that riff. Frank comes out and introduces him. You get Dancing Fool as sort of a nice aperitivo. Then you go into Peaches. Um, this is essentially the uh, Tinseltown Rebellion version with uh, Tommy doing the ba 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 singing that part towards the end. Then that goes into the Torture Never Stops. Again, Baloo's sort of wah, screaming kind of elephant talk noises in the background add just so much incredible atmosphere to this. An excellent solo about a six plus minute solo. Um, one thing, uh, the versions on this, um, and so if you look at this version or the Halloween uh, 77 versions, um, the actual song itself, you know, the beginning uh, with the verses, courses, and then the end is about seven and a half minutes long. Um, so if you wanna know how long the solos are, subtract seven and a half minutes from the total time. So this is like a six plus minute solo. It is really good. Um, that goes into trying to grow a chin. Again, you have pop song, instrumental, lengthy guitar solo atmospheric, another little pop song. That goes into City of Tiny Lights. City of Tiny Lights might be, this is a song that debuted with Ray White on vocals in 76. And it started off very much with a dunt, da -da dunt on guitar, that guitar riff, bringing it in, which I love. And then you get this version, which starts off with the drums, like on the Shake Your Booty version, and then the keyboards come in with these weird, like, duh, duh, just weird little subtle chords in the back before Adrian Ballou delivers what I have decided is the definitive vocal version of this. Ray White is incredible. Uh, Bobby Martin eventually does a good job. Everybody who sings this does a good job, but Adrian Ballou's character and his voice, I think might be the best. Uh, Frank delivers an incredible guitar solo in this. This is a really good City of Tiny Lights. Um, just sounds amazing. Um, that is followed by Baby Snakes. Again, pop song, crazy little funk number, kind of funky number with a guitar solo. Another short pop, pop song. Then we go into a 20 plus minute pound for a brown on the bus. Um, this has uh, a Wolf solo, Mars solo, Frank conducts the band. There's a little Hail Caesar thing in there where Frank's conducting, you know, her and yells Hail Caesar and there's more madness and it just goes on for 20 minutes. Um, and kind of for Wolf solo and Mars solo, O'Hearn and Basio get a, you know, jam with different sort of rhythmic backgrounds. There's all kinds of things going on. Um, you know, Frank, you know, every once in a while steps in, conducts them and lets somebody else take off. Oh, there's an Ed Mann solo also to start off. Um, it's just an absolutely amazing 20 minute journey. Um, and it's pretty interesting because prior to the fall 77 tour, um, Pound for Brown on the bus was just a Frank guitar solo. So they would pay, play Pound for Brown, Frank would play a guitar solo, and then they'd usually go into something else. Um, usually sleeping in a jar in the early 70s, Jones Crusher in winter 77. Um, but during the Zinni shows, the Zappa New York shows, um, during the Purple Lagoon, he inserted the Pound for a Brown sort of vamp 
in Purple Lagoon for them to solo over. You can hear that on Zappa New York, the 40th anniversary edition. Um, so then by the time they came around to this brand new band, I think Frank had realized, wait a minute, we can do a lot more with this song than me just guitar solo. So then it became this Tommy Mars Wolf thing. And from here on out, it was this monster song in which a lot of different musicians got it freestyle and improvise and jam in. Um, so that's a neat little addition. So that's the end of disc one. Disc Duke continues. The first three songs were also played at every show. Um, I Have Been In You, which includes a really long introduction about the background of the song. It's not indexed separately, unfortunately, and it's a long introduction on this one. You kind of have to hear it if you want to hear the song, which I kind of like. Um, I have to admit, especially the live version. Um, that goes into Flakes. Um, Flakes, so when Flakes first played in Halloween in 70, Fall 77, which I'll talk about more of on Halloween, it was only up to the Bob Dylan vocals, um, and then it would end, and then it would go into the next song. But in the beginning of a lot of those 77 shows, Frank opened the show with a really poppy, lighthearted version of that closing Flakes vamp. Well, by the time they got to Winter 78, after the Bob Dylan vocals, he added this in the entire section that appears on um, Shake Your Booty. The I am a moron and this is my wife, Frost in a Cake, that whole part, including the we're coming to get you part. That entire part was added for the Winter 78 tour, but without vocals. So there's no lyrics, there's no vocals. Instead, you get that background part, which essentially features a, an Adrian Ballou guitar solo, where he's just like making it scream and bending it and using that whammy bar to make noises. Just a really interesting, neat, one-of-a-kind guitar solo. And then that would keep building into the dun 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 we're coming to get you, but without the coming to get you. And then Frank would just like rip it off a bunch of licks and riffs, and then the song would end. Um, so it's just an amazing little instrumental interlude in the middle of the set that Frank would ruin by adding those, I am a moron and this is my wife vocals, I would think. And then he would keep those for the rest of like when they got played in like 82 and 81 and 82. So this I think is the definitive version of Flake's Winter 78. This is the only band that did that version. Um, then you get a Broken Hearts are for Assholes. Um, and then you get a Punky's Whips. Um, and I do want to say that like, listen to the Zappa in New York version of Punky's Whips and then listen to this version, which is essentially, uh, you know, a couple months later than the Baby Snakes version. This band is so tight and they now have this. I think the Zappa in New York version is a little stilted and a little rough and a little like doesn't flow quite as much as this. This one flows. Bozio is hilarious. His little, the way he improvises his little hoo hoo singing parts and stuff. The guitar solo is incredible. Um, excellent version of Punky's Whips. Then we get a titties and beer that's got a funny little part in the improv section that kind of makes me laugh every time. Audience participation, which Frank invites people on stage to dance to the Black Page 2. Demands that they get off stage as soon as the song is over. We get the always amazing Jones Crusher. Um, excellent song. Excellent vocal. Just an all-around great rocker. And then we close out disc two with the little house I used to live in, um, which has uh, a Mars and a Wolf solo after the after the song. And the song is Ian Underwood's piano arrangement um, written out for a full band. So you get that dun 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 dun, and they go through that. Um, I'm going to take a quick break because it is getting really hot in here, and then I'm going to do disc three and finish this up. Three. Said slowly for the fade purposes. Uh, Disc 3 kicks off for with Dong Work for Yuda. Interesting song. Kind of funky. I think it's better live than on the Joe's Garage version. Uh, just because it's a little bit shorter. Uh, then you get Bobby Brown goes down with the introduction about the three assholes that Frank tells quite a bit uh, during these early tours. Um, these early appearances. Um, then you get a version of Envelopes. Um, this has lyrics. I will put them right there. Um, if you are familiar with this song, the one that is on Drowning Witch, you can hear it on Halloween 81. Um, it had lyrics. So it was written in 70 with George Duke and recorded, and you can find an early version of that on uh, Mother's 1970. Uh, but Frank never played it live, and then it finally debuted live um, once Mars joined the band, and it's got lyrics. Um, and the lyrics will forever change the way you think about this song, much in the way they might change the way you think about Rolo, Rollo. 
Those are the lyrics. Look at the last part about squat on my blaster, make it go faster. Pretty good stuff. Um, then you get a Terry uh, Bozio drum solo, Terry Firma. These are good drum solos. He's got a little electronic action where he makes some noises and stuff like that. Have to admit, Bozio knew how to solo. Uh, you get a disco boy. And then you get what might be the highlight of the entire set, a 10 minute King Kong with a four and a half minute Frank Zappa guitar solo that is just rollicking and fun and just pedal to the metal, but not in like an out of control way. You just get this version of King Kong was the fast version. So when it starts, it's immediately like dun 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 dun. It's like 30 seconds of the main theme, and then Frank is just off soloing. And this is a perfect example of like how Bozio and O'Hearn, they're just kind of working and, you know, there's like, I don't know how many bars they're playing, but they're supporting them. And as they reach the end of their cycles, things start to tighten up or they just start to like play like do, 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 do the same thing over and over again before they release and there's more space and then they tighten back up and then they release and it's just nonstop process of like in and out, like you're going to give Frank room, you're going to take, uh, it's just it's amazing. Um, and my my favorite moment, right about the three minute and 20 second mark of the song, they just, O'Hearn and Bozio drill on on the same, just like, do, 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 just this, like they're drilling down into the earth and Frank just rides that until finally, like around 335, it's just released and it's just, it's a beautiful solo. And then after the solo, you get some really good keyboard work by Wolf and Mars that is just amazing. And that goes on for about another three and a half minutes before the song ends. Uh, then you get Watermelon and Easter Hay, the prequel. This is a very, very early, early version of Watermelon and Easter Hay. It's almost like Frank went out to the garden and was like, okay, checking on my watermelon. They're not ready to be cut off the vine yet, but they're, they're looking like watermelon. I can see the watermelon. I can hear the watermelon. It's not quite watermelon yet. The opening vamp is just missing something. It's not quite there. And Frank's trying to find the melody. It's not as crisp. It's not as tight. Does get a little solo in. Um, it's more interesting than it is mind-blowing. Like I won't say this is one of his more epic Watermelon and Easter Hay solos, but it is really neat to see how this is like. It's clearly Watermelon and Easter Hay, but it's obviously not yet fully Watermelon and Easter Hay. Um, and then you get your standard run of encore songs, which are kind of funny. Uh, you get a dynamo hum, and right before dynamo hum, Frank goes, hey, you guys want to play doctor? And then they go in there, ch -ch 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 -ch. they play dynamo hum. I think it's Adrian Ballou. I'm not sure. It might be Ed Mann. Somebody goes, what? You know CPR? And yells like in this crazy voice, and that just cracks Frank up. So there's a couple Let's Play Doctor references that are kind of repeated um, in the rest of the encores, or at least in Camarilla Grillo. Um, then you get Camarilla Brillo. You get an absolutely amazing Muffin Man solo. Um, I, um, if you listen to Frank's guitar playing in this tour, following tours, and then 81 and 82, Frank is very aware, I think, of what Adrian Ballou brings to the table as a guitarist. He was very aware of what Steve I brought to the table as a guitarist. And you can see him start to incorporate some of what they do in his playing. It's still undeniably Frank, but this Muffin Man solo has just some straight noise making in like a part of it that's just like him just doing his Ballou version of like Frank trying to be Adrian Ballou. Um, it's a neat meld of those sort of ideas of styles of playing. Then when you get to 81, 82, I think you can clearly hear Vi's influence in his playing then. Just a little more metallic, crisp, that more metallic, less noisy, but noisy in a metal way. Um, and so by 82, I think his guitar soloing was this perfect meld of Frank with a little bit of Baloo and a little bit of Vi. But here, especially in this Muffin Mouth solo, you start to hear that Baloo start to seep into his playing. Then you get a Black Napkins and then you get a San Bernardino with another just incredible Baloo performance. So anyways, that's it. I'm getting hot. This is going long. I highly, highly, highly recommend this, obviously. I think this is just one of the best things ever. It's eight because there's still a lot more of this band to come further down this list. So anyways, that is all. Um, let me know what you think about this. If you have it, if you get it, let me know if you think I did a good job of assessing it, all that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Algorithms. It's hot. Be safe. All that kind of stuff, guys. Um, all right. 
And it was just my birthday a little while ago, which is why I'm kind of lagging behind on these. So look, I don't know if this was made specifically for me or what, but yeah, it's got my fake name on it. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Thanks, y'all. Peace. Take care. All right. Talk to you later.